Ah, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is a, another quick one of our uh, speaker interview slash speaker profiles for Nomos London. Um, I'll, I'll do the quick boilerplate stuff. I'll get that out of the way quickly, so we're uh, we're not going over it too much. Um, for those of you who don't know, we run live events. Uh, this event will be taking place on the 29th of October with a smaller early bird event on the 28th of October. It will be in London City Centre. The nearest landmark will be St. Paul's, which is right on the Tube network. It's quite convenient to get to. Um, I'll, the link Eventbrite page and our website is where you can get the tickets. But just to show you, we have tickets for the... Uh, including the Friday are £55 and general admission is £40. Um, that includes food. There'll also be a meal on the Friday night for people paying. Um, so there'll be canapes and there will be a hot buffet. That's the kind of the normal organizational stuff out of the way there. I'll, uh, I'll just introduce our, uh, our next announced speaker, which is uh, Mr. Millennial Wells. It's quite exciting to, uh, to have you here. Hello, and thank you for inviting me and uh, to, to the event, and also to do this uh, this advert for it. I guess you would say, um, yeah. I should introduce myself. I'm a content creator. I was on YouTube from 2014 to 2021. Uh, I was associated with the Reactosphere and then the alt right, and now what we broadly call the dissident right. Uh, I, my my topics were all sorts of things: culture, politics, psychology, uh, a bit of religion, uh, depression, mental health, that kind of thing, um, and and also the topics of <laughs> that era, 2015, 2016, where it was Islam, uh, multiculturalism, mass immigration, what we now call the Great Replacement, uh, that kind of thing. Um, Nowadays, I, I got banned from YouTube uh, a year and a half ago. So nowadays I'm on Odyssey and Telegram. And I do a weekly show on, on Telegram on Monday nights. And also every year in December, I do a festive thing called Millennial, which some people will have heard of. And, uh, well, that's, that's me. Uh, my name is Colin, but uh, I think most people know me as Millennial Pose. <laughs> which was the name of the channel. Uh, I never intended it to be the name of you know, my own, a pseudonym for me. It was just a name for the channel, but that's what people came to call me. So there we go. Well, I've got your channel on screen now and I'll have your links down below as well. Uh, I know you've got your Telegram and your Odyssey and that's really kind of all you've been left with because you got quite heavily unpersoned from the internet. As many of us yeah. have at one time or another in some form or another. So it's uh, again, pretty pretty normal for being somebody who dates from that era. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think that people have devised ways of evading censorship, and it seems, and also the censorship seems to have calmed down for now. It, it, if anything, they've moved on to other groups of people to censor, like the, the whole COVID crowd and you, now Ukraine. <laughs> if you have the wrong opinion on anything, you get banned. But uh, our crowd seem to mostly be left alone just now, uh, which kind of scares me to be honest i wonder what's what's in store there it does sometimes feel like the calm before the storm well that that neatly kind of brings us on to why we have started doing these events and why i think it's been important for people to kind of gather in the real world as it were and and become a community to give people a little bit of a brief history lesson on what we've been doing. We've only been really doing this a year. It'll be a year to the day when we do our third event. But uh, we had our first event in Manchester. Um, I'll scroll through some of the pics here. Uh, Count Dankula was there, kind of a surprise. We didn't actually announce him because he didn't know if he could be there or not. Uh, but he was kind of emceeing, doing links, telling jokes, talking to the audience. It was quite nice to have him there. Um, these are kind of more geared towards being social events, although there will be speakers throughout the night. Um, I think your announcement will be going up after AAs, so I can I can talk about that because uh, we've we've actually recorded these both in the same day to do some behind the scenes stuff. But it's it's mostly geared towards it being a fun night, towards meeting people. But there are there are speeches and speakers as well. Like I said, the first um, event was geared around being uh, community and localism. The second event we did in Birmingham uh, was geared around the idea of 
you know, where are our new leaders? Where is, you know, a vanguard from amongst ourselves, really? It sounds like quite basic stuff, but it's stuff that hasn't quite been done yet. And that kind of brings us on to the theme of the London event, uh, which will be it's quite broad, but what do we want? And having, you know, watched your millennial stuff, having kind of come back in contact, come back in um, contact with you as kind of a content creator and seeing how you've moved on somewhat throughout the years and, and kind of matured in your opinions, I thought you'd be a good fit for this stuff because you've, you've kind of been through it and come out the other side of it. And, and with our previous discussion, you seem to have, have gained some, uh, some insight there. So I don't, I don't want to ruin the, uh, the the theme of the event, but I, I was wondering your kind of initial thoughts on the idea of like actually talking about what we want, because it, again, it is quite a broad subject. It is a very broad subject, but it's it's one that I think isn't discussed enough because, and it's a cliche, uh, but it's easy to be against things, and I think conservatives and right wingers in general have really defined themselves for decades, many, many decades, by what they're against. And, uh, I mean, I, I remember asking a particular organization, so, so what are you for? And they said, well, we're against this, we're against that, we're against that. <laughs> I said, no, but what are you for? <laughs> uh, because they just weren't accustomed to thinking of themselves as people who are for anything in particular. Yes. Um, and I, I think that's a very natural mindset to be in for obvious reasons because there is just so much in the modern world to object to but that does leave you in a rather unfortunate position where you're just the guy who's against everything um and it also in, once you're in that mindset you then start knee-jerk objecting to things which is obviously irrational and kind of ridiculous so i think it's important for both psychological and social reasons to to be for things and to be open enough to be for things. Um, and so it's an unusual thing for someone on the right to say, I'm for X, Y, and Z. So I've started making notes for the speech that I'll give. And I'm whenever something occurs to me, like, uh, so wouldn't things be better if X? <laughs> uh, that kind of thing, I, I immediately note it down. Uh, for possible inclusion, um, because I, w I want to give some positive ideas, basically, uh, instead of just endlessly moaning, because as I say, there, there is no end of things to moan about. But I think for all sorts of reasons, it's, it's good to know what, you're, what you actually want. It's, apart from anything else, it's motivating. It's, it's good. I mean, the left have had this forever. You know, if you think about the left throughout the last 70 years, they've constantly been thinking, what do we want? Not what, and, and what are we against? But it's balanced by, well, what do we want? It's a positive vision. Yes, um, it, it's about so, balancing so, those two. Yeah, and the left are actually an extremely destructive force, but somehow they frame it as being constructive. And so that enables them to win the ground by appearing like the ones who are... Uh, constructive, positive, living in the real world, and have a vision. So I think it's important for us to try to come up with a vision of our own. Uh, and of course, the danger there is that you just end up envisioning the past, whether it's uh, you know, Victorian England, uh, the Roman Empire, <laughs> or even your own personal past, like the 80s or the 90s. I, I have affection. I have nostalgia for those eras. Return to fresh prints. Um, <laughs> well, not fresh prints, uh, but, <laughs> but uh, things of that era, obviously, I have affection for. But at, at the same time, I, I know we're never going back. I mean, you're not going to recreate the 90s. You're not going to recreate even the tw the 2000s or even the 2010s. I mean, the 2010s are starting to seem like a different world after. Uh, yeah, you you hear people um, who are having nostalgia. They start having nostalgia for the Bush administration, then they but the Bush Junior administration. <laughs> then people start having nostalgia for the Obama administration. They start to feel incre <laughs> incredibly old uh, with people having <laughs> nostalgia for Obama and uh, mm. and all those yeah. yearly drone strikes. But it is a big challenge to have that positive vision. That's why we've themed it as we have and kind of left it as open as we have because it, it's not something I think that your, many people do talk about. And if they do talk about it, it is like a hand wave about a specific era in the past. So uh, it's, yeah. it's good to, I think, have this discussion 
between us and our audience, but also for the audience to have that discussion between each other and, and kind of within themselves. That's really what I, I hope to facilitate um, with a lot of these. Again, to 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 round out more of the more of the shilling uh, tickets are still available. Uh, we've got quite a decent sized venue that's quite scalable, um, so it, there will be tickets available up until the last uh, the last minute. But I would book early, especially if you want to get the early bird tickets, because we have sold I think all but five of those. There's only five tickets left for the uh, Friday, and the Friday is a meal with the speakers and the organizers. And there's only going to be about 20 to 25 people there. It's going to be quite a, you know, quite a small scale thing. So do get that if you if you are around on the Friday. Um, I can say book your hotels as well. It's difficult sometimes to find accommodation in central London. I know it's a two edged sword. It's very easy to get to. A lot of people live there, uh, but kind of logistics wise, it can be a little bit difficult to. Uh, so if you are planning to come, uh, do look at that. Um, Apart from that, though, uh, everything is linked down below. Like I said, there will be a kind of companion piece uh, in writing to this, going in a bit more depth about the theme and our thoughts about it and kind of what we're wanting to do. Um, do sign up for our mailing list as well. Even if you've, when you buy a ticket, you will automatically be signed up to get updates. But if you want to just enter your email address in the form on our website and uh, press a little confirmation when it emails you, you will be added to the mailing list and will be able to get updates on this event and any future events if you can't make it. Uh, is there anything else you want to say or have to show there, um, Mr. Mr. Millennial Woes? <laughs> um, I, I would just say we don't have many events in, in Britain. We don't have many uh, people doing events in Britain. So I think it would be it's a good idea for people to come to something like this. I said the same about Pagan Futures a few m months ago, which is obviously a very different type of event, But I, and I'm not a pagan, but uh, I did enjoy it. And I, I think it's good to encourage this kind of thing and uh, and to vote with your feet with this kind of thing. Um, because I am I, in contact with a lot of people who organise events, and I know that it takes a lot out of them to do so. And of course, uh, what makes it easier, what, what uh, is motivating for them is if people actually do attend the events. So I would, I would ask people, uh, not just because I'll be there, but uh, f for other reasons too, uh, to consider attending. Well, yeah, we, we did manage to get about 75 people at the previous two events, and we're hoping to have maybe about 100 to 110 even uh, at this event, because... Um, scaling up in London. So that there will be a fair few folk there hopefully. Um fingers crossed, you know, knock on wood not to curse myself, we haven't had uh any of them kind of flop yet. This is only our third event though. But yeah, it is it is a bit nerve wracking. You know, I don't want to sound like I'm being a martyr here, but it can be it can be quite a headache, especially when you're worried about um venues and you have to be quite vague with them. <laughs> we haven't had any complaints yet. And to be fair, the venues we've been to have always been quite positive with us because I don't think they quite understand what's going on. <laughs> but uh, but as long as you are giving them money and nothing's kicking off, they, they're generally fine with it. Um, but again, thank you for thank you for coming on. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, and I will I will read up what you said. Please do if you you know if you're on the fence about it. It's just great to come and talk to people. It's just it's really heartening when this community manifests itself in the real world. That that has always been the best part of it for me, and that's the real that's the real reason I like putting these on, is because it allows yeah. and facilitates that, and I really really enjoy seeing that. So I do hope to see you guys there. And, and uh, can I can I just say people people often say this that we're we're only online, we're just chatting to each other and anonymously online. Uh, wouldn't it be great to meet in real life? Well, here is an opportunity to do so. <laughs> yes. So I, I, I do hope that people take it up. Like I said, it's it, tickets are only 40 quid, and that does include a full buffet, canapes, a private room for the evening, our own kind of private bar. Um, we've got a full venue booked out, so it will just be us there. Um, it should be a good night. So, uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys there, and uh, thanks for watching. Okay.